one of the hearts really of this new trade deal and one of the biggest concessions for Canada is in the dairy industry. Ottawa are giving uh, U.S. farmers greater access to the marketplace in Canada. So how does that affect things? Let's get some reaction for you now from David Weens, who's the vice president of Dairy Farmers of Canada, third generation farmer. He's the president as well of all of the uh, dairy farmers in Manitoba, and he's been a guest on our program before, so it's good to welcome him back. Mr. Mr. Weens, thanks for being with me this morning. Good morning, good to be here. Sir, you went to Washington to make sure, to campaign, to lobby, to make sure that Canada's supply management system was not at risk. It's protected, it is intact under this deal. Why don't we begin in terms of the reaction with the reaction to that key fact? Well, we're actually very disappointed that further access was given. And uh, so that is, uh, we know that it is upwards of uh, three and a half percent, which is, uh, more than they've done in any other uh, trade agreement. And uh, not only was access given to the Americans, uh, they, they have, the Americans have negotiated a really good agreement. They have, uh, they have increased access to our market. And at the same time, we are, by the looks of it, not going to be able to export into the U.S. market. So it's very disappointing for, for uh, dairy farmers across the country. And there'll be a lot of bitter disappointment when they... Uh, uh, as they go about doing their uh, morning chores in, in their barns to, to uh, come and realize what's so the, happened. The number that we have is uh, slicing off 3.6% of the Canadian market, allowing U.S. producers access to 3.6%. That's not as high a figure as some had feared. It's a high figure. And not only that, with the with, uh, with uh, elimination of uh, the competitive classes, it'll actually further shrink our industry. So what, uh, you know, what we as dairy farmers are going to be, uh, you know, as, as farmers realize what has happened here, they're going to wonder about how they are going to move forward. Uh, obviously, there will be less milk now required for the Canadian marketplace, and that is uh, very disappointing. What about in terms of... Um action as you're in touch with your colleagues across the country certainly in manitoba that was a focal point of concern in quebec though this has been a huge issue and the premier of quebec then premier now liberal leader philippe couillard has talked about going to court if there's any diminution of the status of dairy farmers what do you think are the next steps then once the details sort of filter through well that's uh, it's too early to tell what we're going to we're, we're just trying to understand exactly what's all been uh, given away here and it's going to come as a disappointment and 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 it's unfortunate that when these trade agreements are done uh, there's always these uh, uh, seeds of resentment that are sown by you know by simply sacrificing one industry to get something that's uh, you know that's that's really good so the question becomes what the Prime Minister needs to explain to Canadian dairy farm families and the other 200,000 people involved in this industry is how this deal is uh, supporting of supply management. That is not at all clear to me, nor will it be clear to other farmers as they realize uh, what's happened here. So that's interesting because, I mean, the, the headline touted is, you know, Canada's supply management system has been protected. It remains intact. You're suggesting by opening up the market to this degree, it threatens the entire system itself. Well, what I've talked about before is death by a thousand cuts. And so, uh, you know, if, if, that, if the claim here is that they didn't give up on supply management, this is... Uh, this is one step along the way that that slowly diminishes and weakens our industry and at some point you know to the point of viability and that of course is not clear exactly we haven't gone through everything here to to be able to know that but uh, but dairy farmers are extremely disappointed at, at how you know bit by bit uh, this this industry is uh, being given away and the question becomes for our children and you know future generations like what is actually going to be left for them and that's that's the thing that they that the farmers will be struggling with uh, today in terms of your own personal business again these are early hours and the details we have not got in in their entirety but third generation farm as you look at this what is the absolute impact on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis well, my brother and I uh, have made some significant investments this year in, in, in improving our facilities, and uh, and some of this will call into question because not only 
uh, you know, did we not, you know, it, it's a loss in that uh, we will actually be required to produce less milk in the future, and so it'll diminish everything we do. And that's, and, and so that's going to be the question that, that uh, dairy farmers and all those people that are employed in the industry, it's not just dairy farmers, there's, there's uh, over 200,000 people employed in the industry, and they're all going to be wondering what is next and how is this going to affect uh, my job, my farm, and, and that sort of thing. I, I need to ask, Mr. Weens. I mean, I, I wonder if there's not an element of expectation here. You heard so many times over this last year plus Donald Trump talk about dairy, how much it was an irritant for him, a real bee in his bonnet. Surely you can't be surprised that Canada had to make concessions in this area. Well, for Mr. Trump, it's been a, a major win, but uh, but we very clearly took uh, took the prime minister at his words that he would that he was actually in support of supply management and and so i'm at a bit of a loss to understand how this supports supply management and 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 i think the prime minister needs to clearly explain to uh, the dairy farm families and and all the families that are involved in the dairy sector exactly how does this support supply management i i fail to see that Mr. Weens, very good to have your perspective on this. We'll be speaking, I know, with you uh, again uh, here on CBC News Network as this filters through the dairy industry. And thanks very much for the time this morning. We've heard from dairy farmers already concerned about what has been struck in this deal, many of them fearing direct harm to their business. With the market opening up, we understand the figure 3.6%. Claude Rivet spoke to some of the farmers about their concerns just ahead of the deals being announced. Angus McKinnon has spent his life working on the family farm. The McKinnon Dairy Farm near Coeticook has been operated by the family since 1845. Canada's supply management system has been good for business, but McKinnon is afraid that could all change. We have been able to adjust slightly between the TPP concessions made and the European concessions made, but every time it chips away at the block. Pretty soon there won't be any block left. McKinnon fears any change would open the floodgates and endanger Canadian family farms. Canada is not going to become a dumping ground for U.S. overproduction. And that has been the constant reminder that we've said to Mr. Trudeau in the past few months. We are responsible for our milk production. The U.S. has to become responsible for their milk production too. In the nearby town of Cleveland, Quebec, you'll find Timothy Keenan and his son Devin tending to the cows. The Keenans have also been farming in the eastern townships of Quebec since the 1840s. No need to look very high up the Keenan family tree to find a picture of life before the current system. When my grandfather was farming, he farmed and it was just to break even. And my grandmother had to go to work in a, to be a nurse and that was what really fed the family. And now in my parents' generation, they can work together on this farm and be able to support themselves and also our own family. The Keenans are obviously concerned with their own family's livelihood, but it's not just that. Tim Keenan has been following what happened to countries that have scrapped supply management, and he doesn't like what he's seeing. In Europe, they've ended up many, many farms have gone out of business, and the European community has put a great deal of money, billions of dollars, to support those farmers. Keenan recognizes the Canadian system isn't perfect. But he points out it's one that has made unsubsidized dairy farming a reality, something the United States have yet to achieve. Claude Rivet, CBC News, Sherbrooke. So, there is the view on the farm. And now we know, of course, the concession Canada making, opening up 3.6% of its market. This is a $200 billion industry, and we are getting reaction already from dairy producers. Michael Serapio taking a look, first of all, in detail, mm -hmm. as, as we've been mentioning all morning, we knew this was going to be sort of the central sticking point because Donald Trump has referenced it, it, it you know, constantly over the last year plus. What are the terms struck? The, well, the term struck really, uh, Heather, it begins with the Trans-Pacific Partnership because essentially what Canada has done here is loosely structured on the concessions it made on dairy regarding the TPP. Now, under that deal, the 10 Pacific Rim countries got market access to this country that equals 3.25% of Canada's milk production. Now, you quoted the number 3.6. We're waiting for the exact details around that, but that is uh, basically based on the fact that we know that the U.S. is going to get uh, what's described as a marginally higher percentage than that 
that, that was given to the TPP. And perhaps more importantly for U.S. negotiators, Canada in this deal is actually agreeing to end what's called Class 7 pricing. Now that slashed the price of certain milk produced ingredients such as a protein concentrate, skim and whole milk powder, all of which is used uh, in making cheese and yogurt. And those slashed prices disadvantage similar products made in the United States. So, uh, and among them, uh, the products made in Wisconsin, remembering that it was a visit to Wisconsin that put dairy into Donald Trump's sight line. So concessions uh, on the whole industry on that. But what was preserved here was supply management in whole, because what the United States really wanted to do was have Canada abandon supply management. That is not what is happening here. But some uh, concessions, which, uh, as we now know, is not being greeted very uh, enthusiastically by uh, farmers in this country. No, it's interesting. And even though you say to farmers, because I've spoken to a couple this morning, Michael, that, uh, you know, at least supply management in the main is intact. They say it's death by a thousand cuts mm -hmm. if you open up the market again another 3.6 percent and on it goes. Tell us more about how they've been reacting. Oh, well you're right and, and when they talk about a thousand cuts they're not just talking about this renegotiated NAFTA now the USMCA. Uh, they're also talking about concessions made to the TPP, concessions made to CETA and to that I want to bring in a farmer from Caledon, Ontario because on the ground there is a lot of concern of what's going to happen to their bottom line. Take a listen. I've got a knot in the pit of my stomach. I'm not sure where we're going with this. It's, um, it's kind of the one of the worst, probably one of the worst case scenarios. It could have been worse, but this is one of the worst case scenarios, giving up uh, almost 3.6 percent of our, our market again to another trade deal is frustrating. That decreases our future growth in our industry. You know, in Canada, we're trying to promote different products, grow the market, everything like that. And by giving it away, you've given it away to foreign countries uh, who've done nothing to help try to grow the market. And you were mentioning the valuation of dairy and whole. Heather, take a look at a big board that we put here, because in terms of uh, the jobs that are, are reliant on the dairy industry in this country, 220,000 worth some $20 billion. I know numbers that you've been reporting all day, but that does underline how important this industry is, and certainly in provinces uh, like Ontario, and particularly in Quebec, which today is going to vote as dairy farmers, and that industry can influence a lot of the riding results uh, in uh, Quebec as the election and Quebecers go to vote today. Michael, um, we're going to be ongoing reaction uh, to all of this, of course, as mm -hmm. we've started to pick up some of the political reaction. Overall, it seems like largely positive, not a win-win-win, which was sort of the, the, what Christian Freeland initially said would be the end goal, but... Uh, on balance, a good one for Canada. Mm -hmm. And that's because in, in many ways, the, it, if you look at it from the American perspective, Donald Trump entered the presidential election race saying that he was going to either renegotiate NAFTA or throw it out. He called it the worst deal ever. So he, in terms of this deal, Donald Trump can claim victory. And in terms of Canada, it can claim victory because it, as we, ha we have been talking about, was able to preserve essentially uh, dispute resolution, that, that section 19 of this whole discussion. Also, in whole, as we say, uh, the supply management chain, although there's going to be criticism and once the whole details of the deal come out, it'll be interesting to see where people fall. Andrew Shear already saying that uh, overall this looks good, but he's going to wait for the details to actually give his overall reaction to what's been negotiated here.